Hey everybody, welcome back to Heat My Shorts. Hope your day's going well. Uh, we are on episode 39 of Flying Across Canada. It's been a few weeks since we did this. This system has been acting up. It is very full. I deleted a whole bunch of things, so we'll see if it runs a little bit better. Um, I'm going to have a seat in my pilot's chair and tell you what's going on. See you in a sec. Actually, no, you, you won't see me. You won't see me actually until the end of the video. <laughs> so, today, let me get my notepad out. As I said, it's been a little while. We are back in Manitoba at Shimatawa Airport. The code here is Charlie Zulu Tango Mike, and we're on runway 19. I never tell you which runways we're taking off from or landing on. Well, I guess I'll do that today. Taking off from run runway 19, we are in an A10C Thunderbolt 2. Now, we have already flown an A10, but it was a, a different model and made by a different developer, and it's one of my favorite jets, if not my favorite jets. So, I'm just basically using this as an excuse to fly it again. Today we'll be, we will be heading 86 nautical miles southeast and arriving at God's Lake Airport. The code there is Charlie Juliet Bravo 6. We're going to be landing on runway 16. It's actually pretty hard to find because it's not marked at all. I did a pre-flight last night. It's an estimated 23 minute flight. So, let's apply my toe brakes, release my parking brake, um, show you the outside of the aircraft before we get going. Here's our A10C. I really like the Warthog faces painted on the fuel tanks. Those are fuel tanks and not bombs. Just so you know, Microsoft even removes the gigantic uh, rotary cannon from the front. I'm not sure if that's a sensor or what that's supposed to be, but there are no weapons in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's funny because this is actually the A10C is the the same the same model that I fly in DCS. So it's kind of funny to see it in this simulator, and we'll have no weapons active for this one. So. Check our stick. Everything seems good. Yeah. Everything seems free. Let's bring up our map and make sure that everything is programmed in there. Excellent. All right, I think we're ready for takeoff. Power up. And release our brakes. Rotate at 120. We are up. Bring our landing gear up. Turn off our landing lights. Bring up our map one more time just to make sure we can get this oriented correctly. Let's level our flaps. Something like that. Now I'll throttle back a little bit. We don't need to be at full throttle for this. We'll get us there quicker, but burns a lot more fuel. Now I'll take this opportunity. Actually, first I'm gonna adjust my elevator trim. Just so we can fly level without my hand on the stick. There we go. Is that it? That seems to be basically it. Let's check our map one more time. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe even a little bit too much upwards. Upwards elevator there. Oh, 
All right, well, I can keep an eye on this either way. I'll tell you a little bit about the A10C. Fairchild Republic A10C. Um, yeah, I think the other one that we flew was an A10A, which was like the initial production variant of the A10. This is a single seat, low wing, twin turbofan, subsonic attack aircraft. The original A10 Thunderbolt 2 flew in October 1977. I couldn't find when the A10C was unveiled with the updated avionics, communications, and targeting systems. Um, but that's okay, I suppose. The A-10 is still in service at the time of recording this video. Some really nice clouds over to our right there, over on our starboard side. Let's see here. 716 units have been built, and I believe that is in total, not the C models specifically. The maximum speed is 600 knots or 420 miles. The range is 700 nautical miles or 800 miles. Uh, the yeah, the cannon on the front is a GAU-8 Avenger 30 millimeter rotary cannon, which gives the, gives this aircraft the nickname Tank Killer. It also has 11 hard points for bombs and sensors and rockets and missiles and fuel pods as well. We've loaded up with fuel pods today. So that's all I have for fact time on the. A10C. There's a lot more we could talk about, but that filled up the entire page. So, that being said, let's take it to the outside and have a look around. I expected it to be a little bit noisier out here, but I'm glad it isn't. I forgot. Oh yeah, never mind. This thing doesn't have towel flaps. No, it does not. Just a very cool looking jet. Oh, that's neat. I like it when you get caught in a jet wash like that. It just distorts the camera. Very neat. Now, I don't know what it is about it. Um, one of my first flight simulators I ever played actually was featured um, around, centered around the A-10 it was called A10 Cuba, and it started, I got the demo on some demo disc thing, and I absolutely loved it, and ended up getting the full version of it, I think, and from there I found quite a few flight simulators, and this is like in the, this is probably in the 90s now, and yeah, I, I had a very old joystick back then, no rudder pedals or throttle quadrant or anything like that but I had a blast playing that. I actually got pretty good at A10 Cuba. Then I, I played some other flight simulators as well, but I didn't get into Microsoft Flight Simulator until ah, a couple of years ago now, I suppose. Two years ago, maybe? I'm, I'm not even sure. I would have to check. Actually, I believe, I wanna say it was halfway through 2022. So like a year and a half-ish pretty sweet I don't know I've definitely learned sorry learned a lot about aviation and aircraft and the world even honestly just from traveling around and seeing different parts of the world it's pretty neat right now we're just exploring Canada and after we're done exploring Canada we'll have to figure out something else find another country to explore or follow the route of something I'm not really sure haven't really thought about that a whole lot, maybe a little bit. Let's check. So we're about a third of the way through. Not bad. You can see I've got the pilot actually rendered in this time. It's actually, this one has it as just a switch on the dash. I think it was, nope, that's not it. Where is it? It's one of these switches right over here somewhere. Right there. Yeah, pilot on or off. Pretty neat. I like that kind of features. Just makes it a little bit more immersive if we can look down and there's actually a hand holding that stick and throttle. That's pretty neat. 
We are currently cruising at about 12,000 feet above sea level, just under 300 knots. Mach 0.56 is what my heads up display is telling me. Now we have a full tank of fuel down there, you can see. Plenty of fuel to make it to God's Lake, Manitoba, I believe. Yes, that is correct. That is where we are heading today. And I do, of course, have Maggie on board with me. She's actually snuggled right up to the back of the chair. I can even reach down and give her a little pet for you right now. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, she tucks in right behind the pilot's chair, this thing. It's pretty neat, actually. Yeah, right in back there. You can't quite see her. But she's there. We'll have a little hangout with her at the end of the video. If you don't know who Maggie is, she's my golden retriever. She is a 12 and a half year old golden retriever. She's my best buddy. We hang out every day, all day. I am also learning a new gadget here. I have a, a Logitech um, gauge panel. It shows my altitude actually on a digital gauge so I'm learning how to read analog altitudes luckily it is listed digitally on the heads-up display on this aircraft and a lot of modern aircraft so I can uh, cross-reference it and as I learn how to read it and just make sure I'm reading it correctly so that's a pretty neat feature it is down below on the dash it's this type of a dial right Right there. Yeah, that's what I have in front of me on my desktop of my PC here. If you haven't already figured out that this isn't a real A10 that we're sitting in. We are in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I'm actually kind of getting stoked for the new release of the 2024 edition. Looks like it'll be just more updated, more immersive, more accurate, and a lot of different types of like mission-based flying, such as rescue and fire, and I believe air ambulance as well. It's pretty neat. Let's take it back to the outside. Now this is not an overly powerful aircraft. It is uh kind of known as being not very agile in the sky. It's actually kind of joked that this airplane has two half engines instead of, you know, two full engines. Kind of equals one engine between the two of them. It's definitely a low speed flyer. They call it a subsonic attack aircraft. And we should be able to have visual on our lake and landing strip for too long. Then, then actually getting a visual on the landing strip is the next challenge. Because it's not marked, there's no buildings. Yeah, I flew it last night. And uh, we ended up getting on the ground, but it was a little bit tricky to find it. VFR tuned in at 35 nautical miles and we have our destination on display there, so it shouldn't be long. Oh yeah, that must be the lake right there. Yeah, that must be it. So I suppose we will dial back our speed a little bit, get our lights turned back on, close our imaginary cowl flaps just because it's a habit. <laughs> Start thinking about getting this big tank of a bird on the ground. Yeah, I guess it'll be a relatively shorter flight today. 
So far the the old gaming laptop isn't struggling too bad. That's overheated a few times on me lately, I'll be honest with you. It's overly full and I don't know. It's giving me some problems. But so far so good. It seems a lot happier running DCS than Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I suppose makes sense given the size of the map of this simulator. Check our map one more time. Focus a little bit more, there we go. Actually, oh, I didn't bring my phone in here with me. I have a, I have a layout of the runway. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I don't think it shows us anything on this one. Yeah, it just shows us a little dot. But I have a feeling, I think I'm supposed to be approaching... I think it's right here is how we approach this. That's what I'm going to do. I did forget about my air brakes last night on the test flight. I'm not used to having to use my air brakes a whole lot on DCS yet. I'm trying to keep my speed up a lot of the time. <laughs> Alrighty. What do we have here? I really wish I had brought my phone. I took a picture of the approach. I'm going to lower my gear and extend my landing flaps. I suppose extend my flaps into landing configuration is more accurate. Well, my gear did not come down yet. I suppose I was over speed at that point. These newer aircraft have a lot of systems like that in place. Prevent you from damaging your landing gear. And I do appreciate that. Yeah, I think we're going to take a basically a north to south approach. Because they have the runway listed as runway 16. That means it's 160 degrees, which is, you know, 180 degrees is heading southwards. So it's very close to a north to south orientation. It looks like it's on that little island. Is that right? No, that's not right. Let's see. Okay, I think I see where we're going. I think we're going right here. I think that's where we're gonna aim for. Turn our map off now. Head back to the inside. Just above 1,200 feet now. A little bit more, I can feel it falling. Yeah, we're at 140 knots, that's a little low. I'm going to align our heading. Align for final. Outside a little bit here. Bring up our map one more time. That doesn't really help a whole lot. Okay, we're good. Oh, 
some, some trees just rendered in there. Okay, kind of changes my, my plan there. Let's have a look again here. It does look like that's where it wants us to land. Really? <laughs> oh, more trees. Okay, we're gonna fly over here. I'm gonna put my gear up. I'm gonna get a, get a better look at what's going on here. Is that where I'm supposed to land? Seems like it, yeah, that's the spot. Okay. That was funny, I had a spot picked out and then a whole bunch of trees grew. That's how fast the trees grow here in Canada. I don't know if you knew that or not. either but you know what the pins up there just up ahead so we can close our air brakes now level our flaps turn off our landing lights and I don't think there's any sort of a building here not that I saw before, anyways. So... I suppose we will just nose up to where this marker on the map is. Maybe off to the side, it's kind of in the middle of the runway here. Yeah, over here, there we go. Here's a good little spot to tuck it away. Yeah, the A-10 actually has these engines mounted up high for reason for landings like this where you're gonna get debris and stuff, dust kicking up, and the engines aren't gonna inhale those chunks because it's up high and kind of shielded by those wings. It's another really cool feature about this aircraft. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit close there. Come on. Come on. A 
There we go. Okay, lock it down. Now, I'm gonna turn off the visible pilot, just so I can see my controls here. See if I can remember where all these are. This stuff turned off. Is that killing our engine? Here we are at God's Lake Airport, Charlie Juliet Bravo 6. There we go. Now, let's see, I'm curious how long of a video this has been. 27 minutes, so a little bit of editing to do here. Let's zoom out. Hello there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that concludes this video, or I suppose the flight portion of this video. Let's see what this little Wookiee co-pilot is doing. Hey, Maggie. <clears throat> Pardon me. Take a little step over here. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> I'm on her doggy bed now. <laughs> and she's just right beside it, behind the pilot's chair. Yeah, just keeping an eye on the uh, the VFR and the uh, the comms. You good girl? Oh, she needs a nap after that. That was quite the flight. Hope you enjoyed this video. It does feel nice to be doing one of these cross Canada flight videos again. It's been a little while. It is fun to jump in the DCS simulator and blow stuff up, but this is fun too. It's kind of funny that I'm using an attack aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator where it's a completely friendly simulator. But anyways, I think that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Join us next time for episode 40 of Flying Across Canada. I mean, not next video, but the next time we fl fly across Canada, it'll be episode 40. That's pretty wild. In this corner, you'll see our Heat My Shorts logo. In this corner, Hudson. I've been watching this Hudson channel, a lot of reviews and tech tips and stuff like that. A lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator stuff. Check it out if you haven't already. Up here is some playlists or content for you to enjoy. Hope you all have a great day. I love you all very much. We will hang out again sometime, I promise. It's been Heat My Shorts with Maggie and Steve. The Maggie Show. Bye-bye.